is an interview taken on October 15th with uh, Yoruba artist Dio Loy. Uh, Dio, recently you had a show at the DeSalvo Museum opening. And uh, at some point during the opening, I happened to hear uh, one of the, the patrons who was observing your work who made the comment that your work seems like it's moving. It's actually in move, moves. And uh, you went on to explain to him the role of music, the, how you use music as in your work process. Could you talk more about that? Uh, yeah, 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 thank you very much uh, for this opportunity. Yeah, without any doubt, if you look at my work, uh, for those who've seen it, the one of the initial uh, observation is what you've just said. They notice that my brush strokes seems to move, or the images on it move. Uh, I equate it probably. I've tried to, but I should emphasize that um, when you are creating, even though in the Western Hemisphere an artist try to articulate what they are creating. But the truth is, most people creating what is called art or, or, or image, whether through ceramics, uh, clay, or wood, or what we now use contemporarily as paint, uh, some will be reluctant to describe further what their work is describing. Uh, but for the easy understanding of my work, I always explain the process of how I create my work. Uh, I do listen to music when I create, and if such music moves me, I dance when, I, when, when I'm creating. More so if I've made a stroke or made a, a touch on my uh, on a particular part of what I'm working on and it strikes well, of course I'm joyous enough to either sing along with the music or dance along. That could have affected the way my brush uh, brush strokes uh, move. As a student, most of us used to do our assignment late at night, and we do it collectively in a studio of say seven to ten artists, and there are about three or four music going on at the same time. So you can imagine, uh, as a younger artist doing that, so it's become a tradition for me that I, I've never even re remember when I've painted to a, a, to quietness. Uh, I've never painted to total silence. I have to paint to music. So that might be why. The other reason that is unexplainable is that it might be the ashe on the work that they're seeing. Ah. It could be the energy of the work mm -hmm. uh, that they're seeing. So that's why I said it's easy for us as artists to want to articulate everything. But it's like a spiritual entity when you create. To have an idea and turn it to a tangible thing for others to see is a blessing. And I think uh, we should be careful as human beings not to want to take credits for what we don't we don't owe credit on. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> you know, painting is of course uh, is, is a two dimensional uh, yes. art form. Yes. And I know traditionally uh, Yoruba in the Yoruba cosmetic uh, cosmology and aesthetic they conceive of 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 aesthetic in more than a two dimensional world. Three or five even perhaps more uh, a aspects. So how do you translate uh, the the native or, or the uh, the basic Yoruba psychology of how they look at the world and in, into how you approach a two dimensional art form? Hmm. Well, uh, I've personally, uh, even though I was uh, trained in the European uh, mindset when you create. Prior to that, I was lucky to live around artworks uh, that were created by Yorubas around, around the shrines, around the palace, when I was growing up in Ede. Um, and of course, I grew up in Ibadan, but my hometown uh, is in Ede. And uh, during with the time when my grandfather, uh, my partner grandfather, was a Timi of Ede, he loved culture, he loved tradition, he loved Yoruba. Uh, uh, ceremonies and the Orishas, so to speak, because he believes that omilakote uh, kato te yarn, meaning when we, we came as humans, we step on water prior to sand. Something came first. Ki agbado, ki adieto daye, kagbado to daye, pardon me, the uh, adie eat something, meaning. Before the advent of corn or maize, 
don't tell me the rooster is not eating something. <laughs> so, so that's the beliefs of the elders of that time, of mm -hmm. which my grandfather uh, was one of them. They believe culture is one thing, and contemporary politics or contemporary spirituality is another. Mm -hmm. And so, I'm saying this as a preamble to emphasize that even though I trained as an artist in a Western way, there's something within me prior to that uh, late teen, teenage days when I went to Yaba, is that the philosophy of traditional caros, the Agbegileris, or the philosophy of the Alaros, the women who dye cloth in Yoruba mm -hmm. culture, the Adires, and all the, and, and those who, Amakoku, Amakoku, those who make uh, ceramics, ceramics and pots, of which a great great ancestor, a maternal ancestor, was one of them. Mm. Their philosophy is just to look at that medium, to look at the material they are using, in most cases, ask for the material to be used, or the material to use them in turn to create. So they don't have anything in mind when they create. Ah. <laughs> for instance, just scoop the almond, and while they are working, the idea comes. That is the premise in which I walk uh, through now. Mm. And then the ability to then form it, to turn it to a three-dimensional effect, even though I primarily worked yeah. on it, were a, a one-dimensional or two, sorry, two-dimensional uh, medium. Uh, the way I paint or the way I draw, actually, probably, you know, thanks to the ability to do that movement with the brush strokes or whatever medium I use, do show. It shows that my ob my object or what I've just created, you know, it shows the three dimensionality in it. So uh, even though uh, as an artist, fine artist, you are trained to know how to use your mm -hmm. material methods, dream method of material training, to use it to be able to do that. But I think I've gone beyond uh, what the school taught me to go back to what my tradition is and how do we uh, create from that tradition the ability to spiritually be in tune with your medium and your materials and respect them as if they have a life. Okay. Uh, that particular process that you just described and, of course, your thought process as you arrived at that, uh, was it in any kind of way, well, you, of course, you mentioned being trained in, in Western techniques and methodology and whatnot. Was, was it any kind of difficulty or particular challenge in making that migration back to your <laughs> early route? Of course there is. I mean, the truth is, uh, hmm, how do I put it without being vulgar? Okay. It's like um, telling somebody who, who has touched a woman before, no matter what the age of that person is, or a woman who has touched a man before sexually, and you then tell them, okay, now we have to now reprogram that person now. I mean, that's not a good thing. Don't do it. That'd be very hard. Even though I've been trained yeah. to look at uh, the element of design from the Western pers perspective when it comes to proportion, perspective, and all of the, uh, the elements of design in texture, tone, and what have you. Mm -hmm. Now, don't mind, or don't, don't forget now, the traditional African artists already have that, even though we don't articulate it. Right. I'll tell you a quick story if okay. we have the time. Sure, no, you're fine. Uh, a drummer, a uh, traditional musician, came from the village when I was at Window to Africa in the early 90s. And he had to perform across the street from there. Uh, it was the summertime. At uh, the point, you know, there's always drumming going on. Mm -hmm. People bring their drum and just that. And he's having about 20 to 30 drummers jamming. Now he came, joined them. This is pure Yoruba guy. Mm -hmm. And folks say, oh, what do you mean, okay, we are playing 268 or what have you, 2288 or 248, you know, yeah. the, the name, the beat. Right. He said, yeah, you're from the motherland, let's hear you. Two, you know how to do 268? He said, no. He said, and you call yourself a drummer? He said, okay, you start. He said, well, I don't know, I have a name for it, but I bet if you start, I know the rhythm you're talking about. Ah. And it obviously did. So, so, I'm saying this to say, that uh, the e effect of learning to create from a Western concept uh, has its place, it taints you. Mm -hmm. And to then want to reprogram yourself to redo it, mm -hmm. excuse me, and become an artist from the African perspective, or Yoruba at this point, or specifically 
uh, is harder. And why it's harder is then you then have to draw or create, uh, uh, and then you still have to critique it because the critique, right. I still have to unfortunately critique from the Western point. I look at an object and say, oh no, the proportion is not right. The Come on, the perspective is off there. I mean, what's going on there? I mean, that shouldn't be. Whereas, if I were creating from the perspective of a traditionalist or a self thought, like we call them, or folk artist, you're creating a story based purely on, you know, uh, from your idea, from your mind. And so, the last thing in your mind is that you want to look at the, as a theorist, you want to now, now over analyze. Uh, your work. So apparently, what it then happens is that I found that, that I overcook my work ah. too much in the point of trying to please both me, myself, and please whoever view my work. So, reprogramming myself as an artist uh, from a mindset of a Yoruba artist entails that I'm going purely from my feelings, okay. going pure, purely. Uh, as a professor of mine at Howard put it, is now late. He's a spirit now. Skonda Bogazian. He was from Ethiopia. Uh, he studied at Howard and later became an Howard professor. I had to take a year class with him on how to reflect my mind as a painter. Mm. Uh, that's the hardest class I've ever taken. What he noticed is that I've been polluted by the Western ways of thinking and ex expressing myself that he got so personal that he had to strike my chest and my head a few times and said, Dio, you got to get it. He kept saying, Dio, you don't get it from here, you get it from here. And eventually he was so, he, he couldn't believe that I was so rigid and very hard to twist from trying to be perfect, as in all the idioms of a Western artist and then trying to think as an African. It's harder to come back to. To answer your question, yeah. it's very, very hard. And I know a few of my colleagues who are going through the same thing will tell you how hard it is uh, yeah, when they're trying to come back to become who they are as an African artist. Wow, because what you just uh, you know, discussed and talked about is it has a I see multiple levels of complexity, uh, and just in my research and studies course, you know, and as a, a, a practitioner, uh, you know, who tries to integrate Yoruba cosmology in my, in my life, uh, I can imagine that, you know, that trip back, say, to your roots, so to speak, you know, like you say, you have to reprogram yourself because probably some of that reprogramming that you, to, to, you did was to adapt to a new environment. Definitely. So in the, in the process of doing that, you, you probably put some of your Yoruba psychology on the shelf. <laughs> of course you have to. Yeah. You, you have to, because you feel... But what they, when, when you are being decoded, if I could use that term, sure. you actually, all the things you've seen, say the sculptures I've seen, seen in the palace, because you can't go to a Yoruba palace, you you know, you've been welcomed by the spirits. Mm -hmm. The columns were made of uh, images of uh, ancestors. The sculptures around you are ancestors gre greeting you, even though they look decorative, they are yeah. decorative. So when you are coming in, you know, you some energy is welcoming you or seeing what you're doing. It's similar to what uh, the camera is now to mm -hmm. London. They said, you had to go anywhere now in London. The city of London is filled with camera. Chicago is becoming that. So yeah. that uh, even, oh, I understand there's a camera in the sky now that sees yeah. what everybody's doing. That's actually the process of how the Yoruba, that I, the Yoruba community I grew up in was. They said, Ethiopia, Ethiopia, Loko, Enyan, Njebe, the gods here is here, the god, I mean, the, 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 the kings here is here, the kings here is there, the kings here is everywhere. That means the kings had you know, relies on people to tell him what's going on. So mm -hmm. that's the same situation with what these arrays are. Arrays are the, the sculptures that are okay. around the palace or shrine. The sculptures, they ever seen eyes or ears of uh, the spirit. Uh -huh. So so the ability uh, for our, an African who's experienced that to then become a contemporary artist through the Western training and then eventually want to then turn it back, it's not a very easy thing. And I think you have to understand who you are first, uh, understand the role of what uh, your purpose is as, a, as an artist, so to speak, to 
to understand that your role is not to create something that is decorative, but something spiritual that should touch people. So you still have to then cross that and say, okay, I have to take that cloth off and put another cl clothes on to, so that you know exactly what it is. It's not really about decorate, creating a decorative thing, but creating something that wow. could talk to people, yeah. to the viewer. So to yeah, this is what I find so interesting and compelling and fascinating for me uh, as, as somebody who loves Yoruba culture and aesthetics is the idea that... Um, so many things are working on multiple levels, the, the aesthetic or how you live. And, of course, you know, the Yoruba world, the cosmology is a world full of um, deities and spirits and forces of nature and that you're just not uh, isolated from any of those. So I guess the challenge of trying to be conscious, aware at least, of all those, those levels uh, probably does take some getting used to once you, you know, re re return to that. So at this point, though, in, in your painting career, um, are you, uh, do you still uh, wrestle with any of those things? Or have you reached the point now that you uh, can totally embrace your original template, so to speak? Yoruba is always saying, I shall bomb your mom. Oh, my God. That could be the case if you look at it, which it means it's a case of uh, trying to cover the naked uh, nakedness of a, an insane person that ran out of the house. Mm -hmm. You could still cover them, but if they got into the marketplace to cover their nakedness, a lot of people would have seen them, so they still know that person is insane. Yeah. Uh, so I'm hoping my case is not like that, and the reason is there's still a lot of work to be done. I caught myself early in my career. Mm -hmm. I was just about uh, 28, 29 when I was at Howard, where all this experience of uh, on turning my Western orientation in, uh, as a visual artist happened. Mm -hmm. And you should understand what Howard is as an institution of uh, higher learning teaching, especially visual artists. Uh, the history of our uh, faculty from the past to present is based on the Alan Renaissance theory of Dr. Elon Locke. Mm -hmm. that uh, encouraged the artists of that period, both literary, uh, musical, dance, and one visual artist of that time, to look back to the ancestry, home, mm -hmm. ancestral home Africa, for their ideas. Because he believes that if um, the modern artists in Europe are doing it, the Cubist uh, period uh, was uh, already was in, in shape, that if uh, the Western artists are looking at Africa for inspiration, how much more? Africans here yeah, to look back. So, so that's the premise where the the Department of Fine Arts, both music, theater, and the, uh, dance, and of course visual art, are how our units are coming from. And that has always been the keys to, for them to see a student that uh, was a need. I actually was told by a professor at the faculty head that time, Dr. Coleman, the reason why. I was I was uh, picked to 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 admitted to Howard. So when they saw my slides, they thought I was a French artist. <laughs> I mean, I, and my style. <laughs> and you can imagine how how that would have been for say few of the professors there. And young, if you know, these are really hip black professor. They don't have a problem being called black. I don't yeah. even have the stupidity of the, going on the radio <laughs> at that time. To say, well, they shouldn't call us black. They said, Dario, we don't have a problem being called black. We are black. Mm -hmm. Black is a culture. Mm -hmm. I mean, so, so I'm saying this to say, when you are around such a tough faculty of adults, artists, powerful artists, political, spiritual, who know who they are and mm -hmm. who know who they are, what their role is. So when they saw a challenge like mine, that this is a French-oriented, you know, uh, impressionist and expressionist artist out of Africa. Mm -hmm. He said, no, let's, we need, we have a work here to do. Mm -hmm. So when I then came, I got my admission letter, I was so elated, and said, oh, good. Mm -hmm. At that time, I still had the uh, Royal Academy asking for me, because mm -hmm. I didn't uh, ask, I mean, I didn't ask for much when I was leaving the country. I, I knew what I wanted to do, spent. And I knew I had an option to go to London Royal Academy, because I've heard a lot about them. Mm -hmm. And I'll come to the United States. But so when Howard's letter came, I thought it was out of my merit.
because I paint so westernly. Uh -huh. is that they say, oh, good, this is easy. This is easy. <laughs> so when I then came and they told me that I was so disappointed, one and two, I didn't know it would be easy. Because the, the, for them to go through unschooling me in the western, mm -hmm. uh, from the western uh, process into schooling me into what I used ought to be, which is myself, an African. Mm -hmm. Uh, initially, I was disappointed. Initially, I thought I wasted a lot of money. I thought mm -hmm. my time was being wasted. But looking back now, I'm happy that I took that route yeah. because I'm now comfortable uh, as an African, as an artist of an African. Okay. Yeah, country. what you just described, though, of course, uh, again, speaking for somebody who, who looks at the uh, uh, Europe psychology and the cosmology, uh, the thing about the, the basic religious system, I guess, of Ifa, just, you know, the religious philosophy period, is that it has an ability to appropriate whatever it is in the world and fit it within that construct. So is it, can I interpret in some of what you were just explaining that your experience with, say, with Western art techniques and methodology and ways of perceiving were nothing but other things in, in the world's landscape from the Yoruba point of view, that you could use to create your work. And that these things, whether or not they are their techniques, the your uh, impressionist techniques or, 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 or materials or whatever it was that might not, might, might not have been native to your experience, but you found a way to use them and incorporate them into your experience. Yes. Could you comment a little on that? Uh, well, that, that's very true because um, if I were to be practicing from home without any influence, uh, Western influence on me. Uh, apparently, what I could have become, if my destiny says so, would have been a sculptor mm. or a drummer, musician. Yeah. Because uh, I should let you know that the act of drumming in, from my culture, the Yoruba talking drum, is very you could equate it to creating art. Yeah, it is. He's, he's a, you know, he has a very there's a link in between them. Or I probably could have been dyeing cloth. Oh. Uh, making pots, even though those are for women amongst yeah. the Yorubas, but there are some creative stuff that I would have been doing. And if I then chose to use color, there have been traditional art colors we use. We use uh -huh. arrow, uh, the indigo dye, we use also the cam wood, and of course uh, the effing uh, was kaolin. And so those three primary colors, initially when I chose to go through the element of uh, the, uh, the 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 Akan theme of Sankofa. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I know Yoruba folks might not know what I'm saying. I said, what did he say? <laughs> uh, the, uh, of course, you, you probably could say that better than me. No, you the, did fine. The ability of uh, going back to, to find, uh, to retrace your step, to find yourself, so to speak, which is what I went through. Uh, when I decided to do that, part of what I did was to limit my palette mm. to the basic I call it the, in fact, I went, I went as far at that time to call it the Orisha palette. I probably have this written somewhere 20 years ago. And I said, okay, I will use the concept of my blue rather than use, of course, there are several blue. You have the, uh, you have the, you have the, what do you call it, uh, ultramarine blue, you have the Prussian blue and a few other blues. And I pick a blue, then I pick a red. I mean, that's of many. You have cadmium red. Vermilion red, and uh, you, know, you, you have um, uh, and several. Mm -hmm. uh, so I pick a red, I pick a blue, and then I pick a white. Whether it's going to be titanium or zinc white. Mm -hmm. Now, out of those three colors, even though white, according to contemporary art, is not a color, to the Yorubas is actually a color. Black is not a color to contemporary art. Right. It is a color to us. Yeah. So I have black, I have white, I have blue, I have uh, red. My major colors were the red, the blue, and the white. So I use the concept of uh, arrow for the blue, osun for the red, efun for the white. So some of my works of that moment, which are ties to the Orisha, if you look at them, for instance, Obatala, Oshanla, which I did on a sacred uh, mm -hmm. old door, was if you look at the palette on it, the, the colors that you got, those basic three colors. If you look at uh, the door I did, the car, I did one for, I call it Cardi on a brown door, 1990. It was those three colors. 
So if I have to then interchangeably tone them up or down, I use the, the, the high intensity color to play around either having a higher or lower, so to speak. <laughs> so, so, wow. so, so at that time, unfortunately, because I was new in Chicago, when this moment came in my career, a lot of fair people who met me, they're both collectors or colleagues, artists, thought I didn't know what I was doing. So we, what kind? Because they thought my works were too simple, one. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, simplicity is the key with uh, African expression. The ability to process, go to it, and those who get it will get it. So over polishing, over embellishing and everything, uh, to our part of Africa is very rare. There are some other part of Africa where they overwork their work based on their spirituality. But with the Yorubas, uh -uh, simplicity is key. You get straight to the point and people will feel it, will feel it. And that was the premise where I was coming from. But because I was new in this market, it was very difficult for me. I have to then find a way of uh, going around in circle and creating things that people could appreciate before those work are then getting appreciated about now. We're talking about two decades later. Okay. Wow. Um, wow, that was really enlightening. Uh, you know, we can go on for, for quite a while here, but, we, you know, in, in for the sake of time, our time limits today, I'm going to cut it off here. We, you gave us a lot of food for talk, uh, to, for thought there, Dio, and uh, maybe we can pick this up at another time and do ver version two, but, uh, I, you know, I want to really thank you for, you know, the insights if you, you lent me uh, that supports a lot of what my re basic research about the Yoruba psychology as, as it um, expresses the aesthetic, you know, uh, which is quite different and quite exciting. So um, until we talk again, Odabo. Odabo. Thanks for coming. Okay.